Hi, comic book fans, and welcome to a very special episode um, today. As I am, uh, I've got here with me uh, Gary Spencer Millage, uh, the author uh, and uh, and um, artist for a great comic series called Strange Haven. Um, I've actually done a review of Strange Haven, um, which I'll put a link to uh, down here. I'll also put a link to uh, Gary's website, where it's got a tremendous website, and you can find out more about uh, Gary and Strange Haven. Anyway, um, before I start asking Gary some questions, I'm going to uh, let you know some of the awards and the nominations that Gary has had. He's got he's had five Eagle Award nominations two Eisner Award nominations, two Comics Creator Guild Award nominations, and National Comics Award winner for best self-published uh, comic, uh, which was for Strange Haven, and also Comic Book Galaxy Award winner for best mini comic called Insomnia, which I have to admit I've not read. Um, so uh, welcome Gary to my little channel. And Hi. so, uh, Gary, for, for I know you don't like this question because I've seen you see an interview <laughs> where you said you didn't like this question. But anyway, I am going to ask it. For people who are unfamiliar with Strange Haven, please could you uh, introduce it to them? Uh, yeah, so it's um, it's a comic book series that I've been working on for. 25 years or more now um started off self-publishing in 1995 but i've been working on it before that and it was just uh, an idea for an ongoing format that i wanted to um i wanted to use as a vehicle for for all my ideas and just experimenting with the comic form um it, it pretty soon grew into something else but um it's uh Strange Haven is the village in which the comic series is set um, and it centres around uh, this guy called Alex Hunter um, and through Alex you get to meet all the different in inhabitants of the village. Um, it's a kind of um, murder mystery, uh, it's been called folk horror, uh, supernatural soap opera um and it's set on the uh on the edge of dartmoor in devon um so alex crashes during a, a holiday break and wakes up in this seemingly idyllic village of strange haven uh but there's uh there's all kinds of things going on underneath the surface so there's um he meets a guy called adam who who claims he's an alien um, he meets a guy called Meg who claims he's the son of a, uh, a, a an Amazonian shaman. Um, and we, we just see the village through his eyes and, and, and get to know the characters. Um, we get to find out about a secret society, sort of kind of Masonic based, but also a little bit uh, satanic. Um, it was inspired in part by Twin Peaks. I wanted to do a, a, a very British version of Twin Peaks, um, but um, really make it for Anglophiles. Um, just go over the top with all the, you know, making cups of tea and all the slow village life. So um, uh, the twist of the first issue I'm probably reveal now after 25 years is that Alex can't actually leave the village. So. There's a there's a big nod to the prisoner there, which was uh, Patrick McGoon's The Prisoner, which is one of my favourite uh, TV shows of all time, and, and, and still is. Uh, but it's as much, say, um, the Darling Buds of May, I used to say, or Midsummer Murders, as it is, is is the prisoner. So it, it's a it's a bit of an eclectic mix of stuff. Yeah, and and one of the things I love in in the is where you have. You know, we'll have a whole page with somebody just eating a cake and having a cup of tea, which, That's it. which is <laughs> <laughs> tremendous. And um, so, my favourite character 
I have to say, is I like the policeman. I like uh, Kent Clark, is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I buried that. I will spot it, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's... Uh, I like I, he's my favourite character, but I also like the as, is it Ethel who wears the hat and talks to animals. Uh huh. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, so you've been writing and creating the artwork for Strange Haven for twenty six years, twenty five, twenty six years. What um, yeah, well, it's uh, slightly longer than that because uh, I, sp I spent a year kind of you know prepping it, oh, right. prepping. It research and, and getting the first couple of issues drawn and, and ready to go before it was actually published so yeah I probably um probably been working on it for more like 27 28 years now okay so what's been the most rewarding thing about such a long relationship with a single artistic creation um most rewarding thing um I think most of the rewards came right at the beginning. I mean, it it was um, it sold much better than I expected it to. I had um, you have targets back in those days. You had to sell a certain amount of comics to be did by the different distributors. Um, back in those days, there was like ten different distributors. Yeah, uh, and. Um, the, uh, the initial orders for the first issue were far in excess of that. So I was really pleased. So I knew it was something I could do long term. Yeah. Um, and all those uh, kind of award nominations and things you read out were uh, very weighted right at the beginning. I, th I think the, the novelty value there um, when Strange Haven came out. You know, I've got, I've got a lot of good press. I've got a lot of respect from from readers and other comics professionals. And uh, I think that's been the most, you know, rewarding thing. And, you know, uh, and still is to be, you know, a part of the part of the comics community, you know, as a, you know, taken seriously as a creator. Um, it's, it's... Uh, you know, I just wanted to be uh, part of the art form. Yeah, great. Which, which and what's been, what's been the most difficult thing? Um, well, uh, probably monetizing it. Um, although it, it exceeded my expectations in terms of sales, it, um, you know, overheads, advertising and... Um, trying to run a business and trying to write, draw and publish uh, a, comic, a comic book series to conventions and that kind of thing um, meant that I couldn't really produce as much as I wanted to over a given period of time. So um, although it's, it's, I'd say it's always made me money, it's not really been a steady income, steady enough to go full time with it yeah. um so it's, it's been very frustrating you know although i've been working on it for so long um i mean right back at the beginning if you told me i'd still be working on it 25 years later i would have been absolutely delighted but then yeah. on the flip side if i don't you know told myself i'd only got three trade paperbacks out you know and we wait to do in the fourth one i would have been incredibly disappointed you know so um I think, um, yeah, it's, it's all about having the time to create versus having the money to, to pay the bills. Um, you know, I've got a very kind of labour intensive, methodical technique. Um, but, you know, maybe that's, that's part, of the, part of the reason why it's a success. So it's um, so that's been the frustrating thing that I haven't been able to produce more really. Yeah, no, I can understand that. Okay, so it looks to me as if we're nearing the end finally of uh, of the Strange Haven story arc. Oh, hopefully, yeah. 
<laughs> with <laughs> Meanwhile 10, if it ever comes out. I think, I think it is coming out, isn't it, Meanwhile 10, any time now? Um, yeah, it's been coming out any time now for a little while. I'm not okay. quite sure what's going on. Um, I, I did speak to the publisher last week, and he said that they've... Um, They've got a fulfillment company involved um, and um, they've had to change warehouses and, and things like that. But as I understand, number 10 is printed. Uh, number 11 has just been successfully kickstarted. Okay, great. Um, Strange Haven is going to be in at least till number 12. Oh, okay. Um, and although I've been trying to draw Strange Haven to a close since about the year 2000, I think. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm getting pretty close, but um, it's just taking a bit longer, you know, just a few more pages and it's, uh, um, it, it's, it's almost done. I, I, I'd hope uh, certainly by uh, before the end of next year, it'll be, it'll be completely finished, yeah. And the, presumably there'll be a fourth uh, trade paperback. Yeah, I'm trying not to think about that at the moment. I'm okay. Not, not, uh, not, I, I don't really know where it's going at the moment, and I'm just focused on on finishing Strange Haven first. Okay, so so my next question was: once have you got something in the part? You know, once Strange Haven is completed, and I know that's what you're working on, have you got yeah. something in the in your head? about what follows Strange Haven? Well, as you, as you can imagine, over 25 years, you get ideas for all kinds of things. So, um, uh, I've probably, you know, uh, I've probably got half a dozen things I could do, but again, it, it's something I'm not trying to think too much and not, I'm trying not to get sidetracked with it. Um, I've been speaking to other creators. I mean, maybe one of the things I'd like to do is is uh, work with some of the creators that I've met over the years and maybe draw something for a writer or, or maybe write something for, for some artists. And um, it's um, it's very difficult to do that while I'm while I'm you know finishing Strange Haven. Yeah. And as I say, trying to pay the bills and. Uh, I don't want to get too distracted by what is coming next. Um, and, you know, I probably want quite a lot of lead time before that's released. So it's not something I'm, I'm looking at at the moment. Okay, good. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, all right. Now, I, I, you know, um, one of the nice things about the first 18 issues of Strange Haven is you, we get your diary at the start of each of them. So, um, we, we yeah, also... that's a, sorry for interrupting. That's, that's something I really miss. Um, uh, because, um, I, I think people, uh, a, a lot of my readers are under the uh, assumption that I'm somewhere involved in the uh publishing of Meanwhile, but um, Meanwhile is an anthology published by Soaring Penguin Press, um, and I'm just merely a contributor to Meanwhile. And um, I kind of miss that control. Uh, I miss that one-to-one um, -one connection with the, with, the, with the read, with the people that actually buy my comics. Yeah. Uh, and as you say, the, the, um, the editorials that I used to put in at the beginning of every issue, with my list of excuses why it's taken so long since the previous <laughs> Um, yeah, and I mean, uh, it's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to, uh, to, to relaunch my website is to try and sort of blog a little more often and, and uh, kind of re-establish a, a direct connection with the readers because I really miss that. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. So sorry right. for interrupting. No, no, I, I was just, I, exactly. I mean, it's, it's when I was re, re, reading them, I was reading the diary as much as I was reading it because you've got two stories going on. You've got your story about, you know, self-publishing a <laughs> self-publishing a comic along with the Strange Haven story. So you sort of almost get two stories at the same time. And of course, because the 18 issues are out there, you haven't got to wait a year between each of the issues. You know, you can, you can get them all um 
well now if you want them yeah, um, yeah so uh, and one of the things in, in the di- in your diary is you you do meet a lot of the um, sort of comic industry greats um, so I was going to ask you um, of the sort of comic industry greats that you've met who is the most memorable and who would you most like to go down the pub for a pint with Okay, so um, I think uh, I had a very short meeting with Will Eisner um, and I can't remember, it's the first or the second time I went to the San Diego Comic Convention and I mean that kind of blew my mind because doing British comic conventions um, you tend to get the same faces Yeah, and it's lovely to see those people, you know, people like um, Dave Gibbons, Brian Talbot, um, David Lloyd and um, you know it's lovely but you, you know at the time you'd probably see them three or four times a year but going going to the US I mean it was just unbelievable the people there get, getting to meet some of the you know some of the real greats I mean yeah. the first thing I did my first San Diego convention I just arrived at the convention center and got my badge and I walked into the uh, to the gents and uh, stood up against the urinal and the guy next to me was uh, Julie Schwartz, the, uh, the DC editor. So um, yeah. Yeah. that was that was kind of a, the, the flavour of it. But just just meeting Will Eisner, who, who had sent me a lovely letter about Strangehaven and, and um, just just to say, you know, thank you and, and um, just to, just to shake his hand. He was he was off to a to a panel and he, he was already running late so he, he couldn't stand and talk but, but um you know that was that was pretty pretty memorable um going down the pub i mean there's, there's a lot of people that um i've n- never really met or, or spent very much time with that you know i'd love to spend uh time down the pub chain to so we're talking about um jh williams um uh, I mean, I, I've, got, I've got to say I haven't more, haven't I, really? Because um, I, I've spent quite a bit of time with Alan, um, having written um, a, a couple of biographies, a comic strip biography for for uh, Portrait of an Extraordinary Gentleman and the, uh, the ILX Alan Moore Storyteller book. Yeah. Um, which, uh, which both kind of happened by accident. Um, but um, I'd, I'd already known Alan um, from, from way back um, before, uh, before I even uh, started Strangehaven from the old uh, London comic mark days. Um, but um, his... He's such a friendly, uh, down-to-earth guy, you know, um, and as somebody with, you know, a far superior intellect, he's not at all intimidating. He's very warm and funny, and um, you know, you, I don't think you could want to you know, spend, you know, you you, you just want to uh, spend all your time talking to Alan picking his brains about stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, Alan Wall's my, <clears throat> my favourite uh, comic writer. Um, most people's, I think, you know, and, uh, you know, when they do that thing about which people do you like to have at a dinner party, Alan's always on my list, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, so, you know, his, his stuff is just great. I recently picked up... Um, I think it's his late, the latest set of extraordinary gentlemen, um, and it's one set in set in London in the nineteen sixties. Yeah, it's fantastic. I keep going through it, saying there's Steptoe, and you know, and there's some um, on the buses characters, and it's just fantastic. Just, uh, just uh, love Alan Moore's stuff. Right, okay, uh, and I'm <laughs> so um, right. I. Are there any are any of the characters in Strange Haven based on people you know or indeed on yourself? Um, 
Well, um, I think any writer would say that everything's based on themselves to a degree in terms of characters. Um, uh, it's interesting, when I was starting Strange Haven, uh, or even before, my, my group of friends, there was some really weird stuff going on. Um, weird kind of relationships and people having affairs and all kinds of strange things going on. And I want one of the things I wanted to do with Strange Haven was make it feel real, not kind of over explain everything. In real life, you don't know exactly what's going on in other people's lives. So I wanted to transfer a little bit of that and maybe some of those stories and aspects found their way into into strange haven um you know a, a lot of uh characters were based on archetypes to start with and then um you know fleshed out with with, with other elements um like like for example the policeman character that you like sergeant clark he, he he's he's based on that archetype you see in so many different films, but taking different elements from different films, TV shows, and and uh, books, and and whatever. Um, uh, whereas somebody like Adam Adam the Alien was really inspired by Full Prefect from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You know, I just thought it'd be great to have that type of character. In. But because of uh, I use photographic reference and I use people I know as well as like, you know, amateur dramatics people and things like that to, to pose for me for the photo reference. Um, it, the interesting thing is that you get their body language and kind of mannerisms and speech patterns kind of like combined with the character that you've already written. I'm, I'm always uh, I always think it's important to write a character first before I have a model in mind for it because otherwise you know you're you're you're, you're being you're being too literal so I mean I you know I, I create a character from the say the combination of different things and then get somebody else to, to play it, almost like an actor if you like um and then again I'm reinterpreting that through it through my drawings um and um, sometimes, sometimes not. I, you know, I could, I can use their voice to help me write. Um, so it, it, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a weird, a weird kind of mix. Um, I'd, uh, yeah. Um, I think the interesting thing when you're writing dialogue and you're really flying is that the characters seem to actually talk themselves. It's not even a conscious thing, because it's a subconscious thing. It can it can get out of hand and even surprise you what these characters are saying sometimes. You know? Yeah. Uh, um. So yeah, yes, to, to to all those really. So how far in advance did was Strange Haven plotted? I mean, did it, was it? Mm. You know, did you know how a strange haven was going to end when you started, or did you just let it develop issue by issue? Well, yeah, both. I mean, um, well, when I did the first issue of Strange Haven, I, it was twenty-four pages, and I don't think I'd even actually drawn twenty-four pages of comics in my whole life before that. Um, um, no, I mean, that's probably an, an over exaggeration, but. Certainly, just just the, the the first issue was it was a huge un undertaking for me, and I didn't know how it'd turn out. And so I wanted to kind of wrap up the first issue, you know, particularly as I didn't know if it had a an ongoing future or not. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so you have to remind me of the question because I've just gone off. <laughs> so, well, I, I've forgotten the question as well. <laughs> Because <laughs> it wasn't one of my scripted ones. I just uh, right. okay, that was excellent. Yeah, I've, you've forgotten the art question, and I've forgotten the question. Right? Um, oh, I know what the question was. <laughs> 
when you when you sat down, did you already have the full plot yeah. there, or did you let it develop issue by issue? There we go. One of us has remembered. Yeah. So obviously, um, there's uh, right right from the first issue. There's the mystery of the girl in the fish tank. Yeah. So I, I wanted a kind of um, a long term mystery, and um, I had certain character arcs in mind. Uh, but I wanted, I didn't want to tie myself down to a tight script or a tight plot line because I think that can take some of the, the fun out of actually creating. I, th I think you need to leave yourself enough room to play with characters and go off in different directions and, like I said at the beginning, to experiment. So, um, uh, so yeah, so um, partially it was, it was, some of the character arcs, some of the plot lines were were thought up, and and, and others not at all. So some little scenes were just almost spur of the moment things. Yeah. Um, what was interesting, I was I was already getting interest from um, sort of TV and film people and, and and things, you know, right back in the early days, and after about five years. Um, I'd done 12 issues I think and I just thought it would be good to have an ending because um, it was meant to be an ongoing thing um, but when you when you sell a number one you sell X amount of copies, number two is going to sell half that, and it always tails off. It's very, very difficult to try and increase your sales. And Strange Haven sales held up very well, but there was a slow erosion, you know, people drifted out of collecting, um, comic shops were shutting down at the time, and I could see there was going to be a point where it just wasn't going to be financially feasible to continue doing Strange Haven as a as a ongoing comic. So I thought. What I really need to do is is have an end to it. Maybe do something else. Go back to it. That kind of thing. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, one of my favourite issues is like it's issue sixteen with the World War Two um, story. That was great. I just love that issue. I, very, very good. I, um, you know, and I could. Are you, there's no way you plotted that back when you started a strange haven. That must have just come to you no but, no but the format strange haven I, I didn't want to tie myself down to one central character although alex did end up being the central character everyone wanted to know where alex was when i didn't put him in one issue um but i wanted to i wanted to be able to do stories you know from world war ii or whenever you know it, it was just strange haven was the central theme and i wanted to develop that in standalone short stories as well so um, I've actually done, I've actually written a, I think it's an eight or 10 page short story uh, involving the, the uh, World War II pilot character. Oh, okay. Um, and it's been drawn by a guy called Adam Jakes, uh -huh. who um, he's, um, he's been working on a comic called Dog Jaw for, um, uh, for a, a small press publisher. And um, his style's not entirely dissimilar to mine. And um, I've been, uh, yeah, uh, I've known him for, for a little while because he's been sending me his comics for, for a while. And um, I asked him to draw that for potential, you know, future collaborations. And it's actually, you know, I'm actually looking for a home for that at the moment. So um, uh, uh, there's, there's probably like four other short stories that I've written and drawn um, that have appeared in um, uh, different anthologies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at some point, you know, all those, all those will be collected as well. So, uh, so comic book fans, um, I'm pausing uh, this interview, this excellent interview with uh, Gary at this point, and I will publish the, net, the rest of this interview in another video. So 
Um, hold your breath. The second half is just as great as this interview has been. Uh, enough said.